Good morning, folks. We've got severe weather, solar features, a big earthquake, and top science news. Let's begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours were very calm as we watched the bright active region and coming on the south with a dark coronal hole out ahead of it. Solar flaring has been entirely absent. Even the new crackling active region isn't doing much to aid in the X-ray events. Solar wind calmed further for an entire day as plasma speed dropped to near 300 kilometers per second from over 500. The corona hole we identified in bronze is visible here in 211 angstroms 2. I want you to see how well defined that trailing edge dark spot is compared to the sparser coronal regions just ahead of it. Top quake of the last day, week, month, etc. Four blood echoes preceded this one yesterday. An excellent deep to shallow transmigration with aftershocks afterwards. Thermal anomaly readings are missing for the region, the white squares of missing data, but I do expect it is where a Delta Class OLR anomaly could be found. Let's go to the satellites where yesterday afternoon's storm explosion was one of the more widespread I've seen. I will let the lightning overlay play twice so we can see how fast and broadly the flashing popped up. Reed Timmer and a few others caught a tornado that formed off one of those lines, this one near Douglas, Wyoming, and luckily far away from towns and structures. Here is what that system looked like in terms of cloud production, high and low water vapor, and infrared long wave return. Let's go to some other shots. Hail damage here. It's been a rough couple days for parts of the Midwest, including a farmer who lost his entire crop due to a hailstorm that lasted about 10 minutes. Some good footage coming out of Paris, France as well. Streets essentially shut down during the deluge. And this is what happened to a Chinese airplane at 32,000 feet when they encountered a freak hailstorm that was not on their radars. Great article here on how electrified clouds and storm features act like Wilson current mirrors for the global electric circuit near the surface. Basically, they're equalizing the current that needs to flow around the planet's atmosphere but which can accumulate in the ground or ionosphere. Quickly remembering the grand solar events of September 2017, we've discussed geomagnetic induction effects, weather effects, radiation effects, but here is a real flare-driven communications disruption. During the run of Irma and Maria in the Caribbean, the solar activity was creating HF radio blackouts, high frequency, that truly did affect the efforts of emergency personnel and coordinators, sort of a worst timing imaginable for it. If you are wanting to be entered for a chance to win conference tickets and observer's gear, you need to go over to the Deeper Look page before August. Get yourself on the list. Website birthday is, of course, in two days. This is how these news come out free each day here on YouTube, and we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our start at close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.